All right, so damping. Whenever you have a, a system in real life, it's not gonna just vibrate forever. And the simplest way of modeling that is to model it with damping. And specifically, sort of the standard way of modeling it is to imagine that there's a spring attached to the mass and there's also a dash pod, some, some damper, and it's gonna have some constant C. And the way this is gonna work is, of course, our spring force is the same as before. We've got a negative kx, so however much x moves, the spring force is proportional to that, where the damper is gonna be proportional to the speed of x. So it's not just the position of x, it's however fast you try to move x. The faster you try to move this mass here, the more the, the damper is gonna push back. And it's again in the opposite direction, both of these are opposite. If, if it was ever in the same direction, uh, that would be really cool, um, but that's that's just not how physics works. Um, because if you imagined once you started pushing it, if it increased in that same direction more, um, like you would have to be adding energy somehow. Uh, so it's always in the opposite direction. All right, so if we put this into, put these together, if we drew a free body diagram about our mass m, we'd have some force opposite in this direction and opposite in this direction for any, any x. So we're gonna end up with our equation of motion negative kx plus cx dot equals mx double dot, which we're always gonna put all these kind of terms together when we do vibrations so that we can put the forcing terms on this side when we do force vibrations. So, but for now, all, all of these terms are gonna be together because they describe the characteristics of our overall system. All right, and remember that in some cases, like you'll have a little bit more complicated diagram than this, like maybe uh, there'll be a pulley or there'll be two springs, but we can always get it in this form, some m equivalent, and whatever is multiplied by the x double dot term is gonna be the equivalent mass, and maybe some damping equivalent, and whatever is multiplied by the x dot term is gonna be the damping equivalent, and then whatever is multiplied by the x term, that's gonna be the stiffness equivalent. All right, so, but I'm gonna keep just writing it m here, but just remember that in some cases, like the, depending on the way you draw the problem, there, this could be two m or, you know, some, some other equivalent mass. All right, and I want to point out here that um, by looking just at this differential equation, we can see that if x equals zero and x double and x dot equals zero, then our acceleration is going to be zero. So that means it won't move if we ever got it to a point where it didn't have any velocity and it didn't have any um, displacement. So that should be good because this is about an equilibrium. Um, and then also, again, the system dynamics are going to be properties of the mass the damping ratio, and the stiffness. And they're gonna be independent of the, the amplitude of the, the motion. Just like with our real simple spring, um, where the natural frequency is equal to the stiffness, the square root of the stiffness over the mass, um, here we're gonna have a, a similar thing. So, and we could write this, we can think about the acceleration is gonna be, um, we could actually find the acceleration based on the properties of the, the displacement and the speed. So let's kind of think through what that would look like for a little example here, where we're gonna have some, some time and we're gonna start with our x original position. Let's give ourselves kind of some space. So if you if you remember for the undamped case, if we start out with some, we're just gonna pull pull our mass um, and, then, and then hold it still and then let it go. So it has some displacement, but no velocity. What's gonna happen is that acceleration is gonna increase and the velocity, so it's gonna be a, suddenly there's gonna be a lot of acceleration because there's a lot of displacement, which is gonna increase the velocity and the velocity will be maximum um, when it crosses the zero position. And then it's gonna come down here and, and then return back and kind of be on this, this sine wave forever where, where this point here would, would be the opposite of the initial position, right? So it's gonna get all the way, like if, if it goes, if you pull it up two meters or two centimeters, uh, then when it bounces, it's gonna go down two centimeters. Now that's undamped. Undamped. Now, when we add damping here, uh, the acceleration is gonna be, first it's gonna be very large because of we have this displacement, but as it gets moving, the uh, the velocity is going to be in the negative direction here. So that means that the acceleration term will not be as big because there'll be uh, more velocity in the negative direction, which will increase 
um, the acceleration in the upward direction, which would, but this is going to be large. So, so the acceleration, these will be opposite. They'll be fighting each other, right? So it won't accelerate quite as fast as it otherwise would, which means when it gets here to this initial position, it won't be moving quite as fast as it was here. Because remember, the speed is going to be the, the derivative of this curve, right? So it won't be moving quite as fast here. Um, and so in some cases, maybe it'll still dip below. Um, but it, the peaks, every after every period, the peaks will be a little smaller. And if we kind of extended this out, eventually you would not even be able to see the peaks um, of, our, of our periodic, you know, it's a periodic function, but a changing amplitude, right? And the, and the peaks will be decreasing and decreasing over time. In fact, sometimes the damping is so much that it essentially, you know, just doesn't want to have any velocity at all. And you're fighting for every little bit of velocity that you get. So it's really, really resistant to speeding up, and it can just exponentially decay here to our equilibrium position. So there's a, there's a kind of a range of behaviors that you can get. You can get something where the damping is really small, and it almost looks like the undamped solution. Um, you can get something where the damping is large, and it just looks like an, un, um, an exponential decay, and then you can get all kinds of things in between.